Uh, it's my pleasure to introduce tonight's speaker, Dean Neal from, uh, oh God, I forgot where. Anyway, um, who's, <laughs> whose topic is the Star Provision Company Limited Bread Token from Regina, Regina, Saskatchewan. That's where it was. Okay. Take it away, Dean. Okay. Um, this presentation is on the Star Provision Company Limited. It's the bread token. I'm a member of the PCNS and also the Regina Coin Club. Um, this is the original presentation that I gave to the Regina Coin Club back in November, but it has some modifications and some extra uh, material added to since I uh, first gave the talk. It's a convoluted story of a previously unknown merchant token. And at the time I purchased it, I didn't know it was unknown and unlisted. So this is the token that we're talking about. Um, on the left hand side there, you can see Star Provision Company Limited from Regina. And then on the, the right hand side, good for one loaf of bread. Uh, the reason I picked this token up is um, I don't normally collect tokens, but I've lived in Regina all my life and I've never heard of star provisions. And I found it kind of an interesting name. Uh, the word provision to me was a throwback to a, a different time period. And it was in a dealer's junk box at a very cheap price. So I took a chance and bought it. And then I started doing some research on it. At the time of discovery, the star token was considered unknown and not listed. Um, and the reason was I checked the known references. So on the left-hand side there, there's the Saskatchewan trade token book by Cease Tannehill, which was published in 1980. He was kind of the, the gold standard of the uh, trade tokens for Saskatchewan. After he, uh, quit publishing, Ron Rogel picked it up and he produced a checklist in 2014 and updated it in 2015. And this token wasn't in, listed in either of these references. So that's why I refer to it as unlisted. See this, one? this is a comparison of the size. Uh, you notice that the, the token is just slightly larger than the 25 cent or a quarter piece. Um, and just as an interesting side, uh, notice the date on the quarter, 2020. Um, it was hard to find any circulating coinage um, with the 2020 date on it. I got this uh, early November last year, and it's the only dated coin that um, I've seen for the current, or what would have been the current year there. So I don't know what the circulation is like down in the States, whether you're getting currently um, numbered years and stuff, but it was kind of interesting that I managed to get this to do a comparison. So one of my friends did an uh, internet search on the star provision token. And the one and only thing that popped up was this report from the war purchasing commission. And if you notice that, I'll zero in here on the, the date. Down at the bottom, it's dated 1917, this purchasing report. So it was a military connection and it made me very happy because military is something else that I collect. So if I go to page 66 of this war purchasing commission report, there's a category of items that are purchased for the Regina Army Camp under the meats, groceries, fish, potatoes, and vegetables and butter. And down in the far right hand corner, you'll see Star Provisions Company. So on this page 66, it uh, was a little longer. It's kind of on a legal size paper. So here's 
scroll down to the next. Uh, just now you notice at the bottom here, there's a bread category. And you notice that star provisions is not listed under the bread. And we're talking about a bread token. I found that kind of strange, but I wasn't too worried about it. There probably was sort of some sort of explanation on it. So now, oh, I should I should go back. The one thing that sort of as an aside on this uh, war purchasing commission report, it's a masterpiece of bureaucratic efficiency. Not sure if it was done by the army or the government or both, but is basically made up of three sections. The first part is the listing of companies that supplied specific army camp locations. And they were grouped under the companies, under the different categories that the items supplied, like the meat and grocery category or the bread category. The second part of this report is minutes on the committee meeting. And then the third part is a rearrangement of part one but this time showing all the companies that provided a specific item for Canada as a whole. So there'd be a, a listing of under the bread category would show all the companies across Canada that supplied bread to the army. This report runs to 1,134 pages and there were two more reports of that, just like this one. So they covered the first world war in Canada. So I thought that was a lot of bureaucracy to keep track of things, but glad they did. So if we take a close look at the star provisions and the blue arrow, we need to focus on the limited, the LTD, because that's the key to the further research on this company. What you are seeing now is the legal incorporation document of the company when it was incorporated. And I want to, this is from the lawyers, and it's kind of a boilerplate incorporation document, but I want you to focus in on the handwritten part there where they've added bread, bakeries, and supplies to what the company is going to be offering at the time of incorporation. So if we go up to that. Uh, just. is giving me problems here so but anyway you can see at the top it says the star provision company so the next page is the signature page and the first thing i want to do is look at the bottom the date the 2nd of december 1907 so this is when the star provision company limited started And if we go to the middle part there, we see the people that signed up as having shares in the company. The first guy is Donald. I'll have to read out his name here. Donald B. McCall, Baker, and he gets 10 shares. Everybody else has got 30 shares. And the the three people that are listed with the 30 shares are the people that ran star groceries which was in turn sold to star provisions so now we know the name of the baker whose bread is advertised in this token then the research took me to the henderson directory for the city of regina the 1908 issue. This is the first um, first year of issue for the Henderson Directory. In its day, Henderson Directory was the paper version of Google for a city. It listed companies, people, and addresses, and they were listed in different ways. Alphabetic listing by name, by business categories like bakery, 
and by who occupied street addresses locations. This is the alpha listing for Star Provision Company Limited on page 181. And right in the center of the page, they've got an enlarged, basically advertisement of talking about the Star Provisions. So it lists the different people and their positions, and groceries, bread and bakery. They reside in the dark block, 2123 11th Avenue. Notice how 11th is spelt out. And a phone number, just the three digit phone numbers. So take note of the address, like I say, dark block, the 2123 11th Avenue, because that's kind of important later on. So now here's the, another page 134 of the star or the Henderson directory. And down at the bottom, you see McCall Donald B. He's the manager of Star Bakery and his home is on Osler, Northwest corner of 14th Avenue. So now we've got a, you know, confirmation of, you know, the baker and the Star Bakery and that out of the Henderson directory. These are just some screenshots or uh, advertisement of the top pages of the um, Henderson directory because um, Star Bakery was a big advertiser in the, the directory and they had lots of top page ads and this is just you know, examples of the different types of advertisements they had. And then this is just a, another two page top advertisement and stuff. But the Star Bakery or the Star Provisions not only advertised in the Henderson directory, but they advertised in the local newspaper. Uh, this is uh, an advertisement taken out of the local paper, The Leader, and it's from April 15th, 1908. And I'll kind of enlarge it here. And you see in the center there, they talked about bread, bread, bread. And we'll go on to the next page. And this is a fuzzy enlargement of the, the previous slide and the bread, bread, bread. But here's what it actually says. So the advertisement is, in order to further introduce our bread, which is meeting with much favor by the citizens of Regina, we are giving away a free fancy cake with every order for a dollar's worth of bread tokens. 13 tickets for a dollar. So now we know the value of the bread tickets. It's a baker's dozen, and essentially it's worth about seven and a half cents for a loaf of bread. Now, this is an aside. Um, there's a major difference between tickets and tokens. So Ron Green of Victoria, BC, a prominent researcher of tokens, informed me that English people from the UK tend to use the word ticket instead of the word token. The two are somewhat interchangeable with ticket being the more prevalent usage. So a ticket can mean both paper item or a metal disc depending on the person using the item. So in this advertisement, does ticket refer to a paper item or could it refer to the metal token that we're dealing with in this presentation? So it, here's just another example of the, the star provision out of the newspaper. And then this next one is one I really like. And if you can focus on the center there, I'll read it out to you. If you can't come, phone your order. If you have no phone, send your children. If you have no children, come anyway. I just thought it was a neat way to advertise. So, Then this is a letter dated April 19th, 1909. And it is a letter sent to E.J. Wright, 
the registrar of joint stock company. And it's from AF Cruthers, one of the owners of the Star Provision. Uh, dear sir, no longer doing business, but we sold to the Johnson brothers. We gave them the right to use the name Star Provision Company, but this is not a limited liability company. So that's 1909. And this is just kind of the official announcement of the registrar dated August 2nd, 1909, that the Star Provision Company is hereby struck off the register and the company dissolved. So the, um, the Star Provision Company has now been sold and it continues on in the use of the Star Provisions Company without the limited part. This Star Provisions Company, this new version, is what was listed way back at the start under the, um, the War Commission's report. So this version of Star Provisions stayed in business until the early 1940s, when it appears to change its name back to Star Groceries, which is the original company that started this whole circle. So it's come kind of full circle. Then the, um, this is the 1909 Henderson directory. So one year later, and if you notice down at the bottom, the McCall Donald B. Grocer is now listed at 2205 Lawrence Street and is home at 2127 St. So the grocer is no longer listed as the baker. So he didn't last with the company for very long. So a summary of the timelines. So December 2nd, 1907, it was incorporated as a new limited liability company with the name Star Provisions Company Limited. April 19th, 1909, there's a letter stating that the company was sold. August 2nd, 1909, they formally struck off. So you can't use the word limited liability anymore. So based upon this, my conclusion is that the, with the timelines, this token was most likely produced in 1908 because you've basically got sort of a, the free 1908 time period. So that's kind of the end of the original presentation. But since then, there was an initial update, um, December of 2020, time new time the original presentation of the Regina Coin Club and then the presentation to PCNS. At uh, the December 16th, 2020 meeting of the Regina City Council, a motion was passed granting the dark block municipal heritage designation. So remember way back at the start of the uh, presentation, the dark block was listed as the address for Star Provision Company. So heritage designation was granted because the dark building historical and architectural significance to the city. In 1907, when the original building was erected, the owner was the real estate developer, Francis Nicholson Dark. He was the ex-mayor of Regina. The architectural significance comes from the Chicago style building and the first use of what they call mushroom headed reinforcement concrete columns. So remember that the advertisements from the earlier uh, presentation listed star provisions at 2123 11th Avenue. The municipal heritage designation lists, lists the dark block at 2125 11th Avenue. So there's only two numbers difference, but the building was built in 1907 and Star Provision was there in 1908, so it was likely the first tenant on the ground floor. The rest of the building was business offices. 
Um, the following photos are taken from an information package presented to the City Council as part of their um, information for their uh, deliberation on the, the meeting of that. So this is the dark block or the building that we're talking about and it's actually facing onto 11th Avenue. So you'd be standing on 11th Avenue looking at this building. If you look up at the top, you'll notice that there is an extra two stories been added. So the original building goes up to the, the roof line and it was only five stories high. And then an additional two upper floors were added in the 1950s. And this is some more pictures from the information package, just highlighting some of the interesting architectural features. So the history preserved for future generation. History has now been preserved not only via the star provision token, but also by saving the complete dark block building. So that's the end of it. So. Awesome, wow. thank you. Thank you, Dean. That was that was very interesting. Um, it, oh, sort of I'll showing the- Stop sharing here. There you go. There you go. Sort of showing the guts of how you went about finding out what this was about since nobody knew. I like yeah, well, like I say, it was, it was kind of just sort of stumbled along. One thing led to another and I just happened to be lucky to find lots of records that helped me to yeah. narrow it down, so. That's great. Does anybody have any questions for Dean? I had a few. Good. Um, yeah, I found that ad interesting about, you know, send your children if you don't have any children come yourself. Yeah. That's kind of cute. Um, I was always under the impression, and maybe uh, Bill or somebody can comment on this, that the Baker's tokens were sold always as 13, and you paid, you know, for a dozen, and you got the one yeah. extra by paying in advance. And mm -hmm. that, um, and one of the reasons for the, that that uh, housewives would like tokens is that you could give to a token to little Johnny and he wouldn't spend the money on a candy bar and have to go get an actual loaf of bread. <laughs> Whether that's actually true or not, I don't know. <laughs> nice theory anyway. Yeah, yeah, it's a good story. Um, my, but actually what I'm really curious about is the, the phrase, the dark block, you know, and the block being not a city, um, a city, a, a unit of a city, like a city block, um, but the building itself. And, um, right. you know, that Montgomery block was a famous one in San Francisco. There are a few others. Um, you know, is that, it, it never really dawned on me, but is that a, is that a, is that a common 19th century way of describing these large uh, brick or stone buildings? I, I think it is a bit of, instead of referring to it as a building, they call it a block. And I've noticed other advertisements for apartments and other large buildings. And it, you know, quite often is um, termed block. Mm -hmm. um, there's a couple other businesses where, you know, like the Carmen block was a set of uh, apartments plus some um, commercial real estate and that. So yeah, I think it was, in the, at the time, it was, a a common thing. And they would use that as a description instead of a specific street address. Mm -hmm. So we're in the dark building. Everybody knew where it was, knew where to find it. You didn't have to give a specific street address. And then as places grew, then I think the address become more important. But a lot of the advertisement on this token would just simply dark block or dark building. And that's... Yeah. Yeah, it's it's. Uh, I've noticed, for example, people listing their uh, apartment address, and they just say, "I'm in the, you know, the Anita or the whatever apartment building," and you knew what that was, not the numerical address. That that was true in Santa Cruz at the same time frame as as your mm -hmm. token. That yeah, that a a building would be referred to as the Bernheim Building, and there might be five or six businesses in there in addition to the Bernheim business, which owned and built the building. So it's very common. Well, you know, it's the block thing that I'm curious about. Um, I do remember as a teenager, old timers in Wilmington would 
call a blo a city block a square mm -hmm. instead of a block. He's oh, you got to go down five squares, which you know. <laughs> and was, they were called uh, blocks. They were called blocks in Santa Cruz. That so the Bernheim block would refer to the Bernheim building and all the businesses that were in it, and usually residences apartments above the ground floor mm -hmm. uh, but they would refer to it as a block uh, and th that made it in the street addresses when they were listed it might be one number one year and a different number two years later even though the it hadn't moved it just everything was renumbered for mm -hmm. whatever happened uh, to, to cause that but if it said the Pacific Ocean House you knew where it was well, in, in this case, the the building itself takes up he's essentially about a half of what we would consider a city block right now. Mm -hmm. So it it's fairly substantial, and there is an alleyway between the dark building and the building next door. So you know it it was a pretty big. Um, chunk of real estate there right on 11th Avenue so cool yeah yeah that makes sense any other questions? question this is her oh hey her okay Dean have any other examples come to light since your joke was discovered not yet but the I'm just sort of getting the word out I've written an article for the Canadian token collectors on this. I've given a presentation just in November and now I've done this. So uh, no, so far there hasn't been any others coming out of the woodwork, but then there also hasn't been any um, coin shows where people can get together and actually talk right. about it than that. Right. So um, we'll just have to kind of wait and see. <laughs> I have a general question. A lot of the um, the milk tokens and the bread tokens say sanitary. What what does that mean actually? It's a sanitary establishment, a sanitary bread establishment or milk establishment. I, I think they're trying to convey the fact that they're they're safe. I noticed in a lot of the advertisements for the bread company, they really heavy emphasize, you know, sanitize clean environment, all the rest. So I think it's it's more of a PR thing, trying to make sure that people understood that, you know, may have been in a factory or a larger establishment, but it right. was, you know, under good clean conditions, so. No, and on that, on that note, um, when my mom was still alive, we would go down to South San Francisco on the main drag there, and there was just simply the sanitary bakery, and they had the best bread pudding Oh my goodness, but you know, that was just its name. It wasn't anything else. It was the sanitary bakery. And uh, so, yeah, I, I've noticed that too. It's, it's still there. Oh, it's still there. Good. I'm yeah. glad to know that. I've been there many times when I worked down there. Uh huh. <laughs> in, in Santa Cruz, when they said sanitary, that meant it was white labor and not Chinese labor. <clears throat> That's. Ah. That also That's interesting. Has, has a certain uh, ring of truth to it. <laughs> These happen to be Italian, or at least they were then. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Now they're Asian. <laughs> <laughs> In possibly an ironic twist. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, any other questions? Yes, Mark. You're muted, Mark. You're muted. You're still muted. Michael, I think you're going to have to unmute him. Yeah, he has to unmute himself. I asked him to unmute. Yeah, yeah it just came on. Oh, there you go. Um, <clears throat> Reference to Canadian token catalogs. I've done some research on some Canadian ones, and there was one I got from uh, uh, Windsor. And I had to go to several museums 
before somebody in the museum knew somebody that had a catalog. So what are they publishing, like 25 copies of these things? Or... <laughs> you have any idea on that? Have you got a big collection of token catalog? Well, you said you don't usually do tokens, so probably not. What, what we find is that the, the catalogs for the tokens tend to be more local, uh, especially divided by provinces, um, you know, and yes, they are probably a more limited run. Yeah. But uh, there's more and more of them coming out and some are self-published and the guy, you know, is paying for it and getting it updated. Yeah. Um, the, the, the Ron Rogel checklist that I just mentioned, they've updated that and they've put in photographs and now put it online. So there's more and more uh, of these items uh, coming online, basically an online catalog which cuts out the printing costs, so. Yeah. Dean, are you aware of the tokencatalog.com that Richard Griever has put together? Um, no, I'm not. That, that, is, that is the actual web address, and it is a, um, a, a, a listing of everything World. Um, that, is World. Sort of, that is sort of user um, crowdsourced, I guess is what you say. Ah, yeah. And so, um, um, I would encourage you to go to tokencatalog.com and, and register and, um, and, and uh, put some of the information that you've, you've discovered onto the, about this token. Yeah, submit it. Yeah. Okay. I'll yeah, they have over 500,000 tokens listed uh, on tokencatalog.com. It's a, an enormous database. I've, I've contributed about 2,000. <laughs> of course you have. Is it, it, free? Or, it is like, free. It is free. It is free. It is like WikiLeaks. It's it's, uh, w it's, it's like a Wikipedia of tokens, and it is cool. moderated. And so, um, you know, when I make a mistake, and I do all the time, um, I get an email from a moderator saying you made a mistake. Well, I I can no longer say this token is unlisted because the. Uh, they've now added it and added the the image onto the um, the online catalog, so it's now listed under the Saskatchewan tokens. So, uh -huh. wow. well, uh, now it's previously unlisted. Yeah. If, if, if everybody will bear with me for uh, just a moment, I'm going to share a photograph. Um, this is from Santa Cruz, and here you can see Anthony Block, uh, 1848, and that refers to this building that wraps around and, and runs about a half a block up, uh, up the street. So that, that's an example. This is shot about, uh, I don't remember the exact date now, it's about 1910 was when this uh, photograph was, was made. Cool. 